I am Dr. Preeti Birwal, working as scientist in the Department of Processing and Food Engineering, Punjab Agriculture University. So today I will be discussing the non-thermal processing on milk and milk products. So these are some outlines which I will going to be discuss. So before starting, so first we have to uh, understand why we process the food. So first and all, the main concept is to extend the shelf life of the food product. So we process the food so that the shelf life of the food is extended so we can consume later on also. Second is to maintain the sensory property. Though we are processing the food, we have to see the sensory property should not alter very much. It should be in the acceptable ranges. The third is to maintain the nutritive properties. And because the many of times, the sometimes the processing is too harsh that it may not prevent all the nutrients. Many nutrients get uh, degraded or depleted or spoiled during the uh, processing. So we have to see the all the nutrients or may uh, maximum nutrients, 90% of the nutrition of a food should be maintained during the processing. Then ensuring the safety. This is aspect of bacterial safety so it should be safe enough for the consumer to consume the food the uh, fifth one is it the processing give you convenience to eat the food because if it is raw uh, uh, you may uh, cook at the home but if it is processed in the industry you can uh, consume it uh, recording in progress okay you can consume it later on so it is the basic fundament of the food processing industry then economic value the value of your food is increased for example the potato in the market is 20 rupees kg but the uh, potato chips in the market is only the 100 grams cost you the 100 rupees like that so there are many types of processing available it is chilling freezing and then cooling thermization thermal processing high temperature processing the basic Criteria is the thermal processing of the food. The thermal processing is a major technology that has been major or the commercial one that has been commonly used in the dairy as well as in the food industry to increase shelf life and to maintain food safety with low processing cost. If we see the importance and the limitation of the thermal processing, the thermal processing, the main criteria is to reduce the microbial load and make it uh, free from the enzymes but with this though the thermal processing is the main processing and it is it has been used uh, till the uh, since the ages okay so the basic one like boiling okay cooking in the fire like that but there are few limitations also there in the thermal processing so there are lot 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 of uh, uh, I can say improvement is there even in the pasteurization, if you see even in the thermization, if you see even in the sterilization, there are improvements which actually prevent the food degradation. I'm not saying there are no improvement, but still with this thermal processing, there are the uh, limitation like it creates off flavors, it affects the color of the products, it to lead to the loss of the nutri nutritional quality and it is very much unsuitable for the high viscous products. For the viscous product, the thermal processing usually is not preferable. Okay, so with the, this, because of this thermal uh, limitations, the scientists or the researchers or the industrialists uh, or the scholars, okay, they all have come up with the non-thermal technologies. These technologies are like the pulse electric field technology, high pressure, pulse light, ultrasound, infrared, irradiation, ozone, cold plasma, electron beams. There are many of the non-thermal technologies. If we see, there are few are field oriented. That means like electric field magnetic field okay or maybe the electrons field so the few are field oriented few are the thermal oriented in that there is a heat addition there is heat removal and then the mechanical one where uh, like extruder mixing emulsifying okay so uh, there are 
the mechanical one technologies are also then then the ga gas one which are the ozone co2 co2 is used in the supercritical fluid extraction and the cold plasma so if we see the in the field there is the pulse electric field then pulse light oscillating magnetic field irradiation and ultrasound these are the technologies where the field is used the field is of electric electrical waves or electron waves or sound waves like that okay and in the thermal there is a heat addition where you give heat to your food that is pasteurization retorting drying baking frying and ohmic heating there is a little bit of confusion by whether ohmic is a non thermal technology or ohmic is a thermal technology if you see in the ohmic heating the temperature is going up to 110 and 120 degrees celsius okay so but the ohmic is again coming into the non thermal technologies also so why it is happening so if i am telling you this in the ohmic heating what is happening the food is placed in between of two electrodes and in these two electrodes electricity is passing and because of this electricity the food is giving a resistance like food is not okay to flow with the electrons of the electricity so food is giving the resistance to the electricity movement so when the food is giving the resistance at that time the food Uh, because of that resistance the heat is generating and that is is causing the uh, rise in the temperature so the mechanism is actually the resistance but the temperature is going up so it is falling in between the thermal and the non thermal technologies but because the mechanism is resistance so we are taking it into the non thermal part okay so these are the basic non thermal technologies and in the thermal technologies you can see the freezing drying frying chilling extrusion and blanching and why we need the non thermal technologies the main concern is to produce microbiologically safe minimally processed because we have to prevent the nutrition we have to prevent the organoleptic aspects of our food with sound nutrition and organoleptic attributes so before moving further we have to see in the scenario of our food industries so last uh, two years back the food industry market was 263 billion and coming up it's 535 billion in 2025 you can see it is more than double of the uh income from the food industry and india exports of agri and food process stood at 32.5 billion in 2019 which 10% of overall export from india at growing cager of 5.9 if you see and you can see 98% of india sector is micro that means small industries are involved at a level of 98% so what a huge scope is there in the processing industry by 2030 indian annual household consumption is expected to triple triple that will make india the fifth largest consumer in the world okay though the population is second largest again it will make you the fifth largest by 230 then this sector will create lot of millions of job by 2024 if you see after the covid pandemic also the people from the normal uh, business are shifting to the food business because it is a profit giving business so we have a lot of scope and very much you can see from this uh, uh, graph in india 50% of raw food is unprocessed that means if you see outside of the india see the uh, status of germany 72% of food is processed so the scope of new technologies new food products something new is very much less but india 50% and india is the largest producer of grain milk food potatoes like that 
so 50 percent of that is unprocessed so see how much scope we have and this is related to the industry this is related to the students of masters student of phds who wants to take their research project in the food so you have lot of scope which you can do in india because 50 percent is not even processed in india lot of scope is there then from the basic scenario coming to the non-thermal scenario in India, non-thermal processing is not very high and very few companies are there, very few institutes are doing the work. But outside India, the market is growing, people are doing the research, institutes are taking, taking up the projects. In that, 20.6% is the rapid growth has been reported on the pulse selective field and the rate of market value is 1.5 billion. So from here, we can see the market is coming up because non-thermal is something is very new. And these uh, techniques are a little bit of costly. So taking up like you want to process some something of your food boiling is a part then again giving some kind of treatment will cost us something so instead of that you will just boil your food so we need to introduce people if you uh, give the thermal uh, non-thermal processing to your food it will give a higher nutrition value to your food then if you see uh, the market size is seven. 0.3% growth rate is there that is very good as if we see the non-thermal processing there are prominent players are also there Bosch is Buller, Nordrian uh, then uh, Duquesne is there Pulse Master and Elia Technologies these are the very big companies and these uh, companies are fabricating very high end uh, equipments at the world level and uh, you can see how the North America is leading in the non-thermal processing of food and uh, if you see uh, there's quality assurance the aspects of non-thermal processing in the food industry the quality insurance microbial in inactivation cutting emulsification cleaning so in all this if you see microbial in inactivation is little bit over edging all other technology uh, like uh, uh, uses of non-thermal so the basic if you see the non-thermal uh, technologies are used are uh, we are using for inactivation of microorganisms okay so this is the one uh, just give me a minute okay and uh, in the non-thermal process technologies we have high pressure pulse electric ultrasonic irradiation cold plasma and others in that high pressure processing is uh, is dominating and is uh, more in the use either in the world level or in at the Indian level also in the India also many companies are there many juices are now in the market at each platform of high pressure processing then the pulse electric field is there that is the second technology now the ultrasonic is also there so ultrasonic uh, is used in the lab lab the waves are used for small, small purposes, for the emulsification, for breaking down the tissues of the food and peeling, breaking down the peels, mixing the food. So small, small equipments are there. But the major use of ultrasonic waves are still uh, like in between. So we are just in the process like how we can use ultrasonic also at the commercial level. Then there's a cold plasma. Cold plasma is again is a new whole technology and is currently leading in the research area. People are doing a lot, lot, lot of the research in the cold plasma. Then I will be covering today only two technologies. One is the high pressure processing and second one the pulse electrophile because covering all the uh, 9, 10 technologies will take a lot of time. So main technology is the high pressure and the pulse electrophile. So coming to the high pressure processing. So high pressure processing is a non-thermal method of preserving and sterilizing the food in which a product is processed under very high pressure leading to the inactivation of certain microorganisms and enzymes in the food. If you see intensive pressure about 400 to 600 megapascal, 
that is the weight of more than three elephants okay this is the weight uh, which uh, fish or uh, the bottom of the sea okay about uh, 10 to 20 kilometer below this is the pressure on the earth when it is the water pressure on the earth in the sea so intensive pressure of 400 to 600 megapascal is being given to the food for certain period of time then this is a kind of pressure treatment which is used for both the liquid and for the uh, solid also or the high moisture content solid foods and it is also known as the high hydrostatic pressure or the ultra high pressure processing the resistance of microorganism to the pressure varies considerably depending upon the pressure range, temperature, treatment duration and type of organism. So we have to see which type of organism is there. So with that, we will vary the pressure range, we will vary the temperature and the treatment duration. Then you can see, uh, typically when we give uh, this kind of pressure, to the food so it is not a sudden like you can just not put all the 400 megapascal to the food so first is we have to build up the uh, pressure to 400 megapascal that we call as a come up zone okay then we need to hold that 400 megapascal for certain period of time it may vary from even one second to 50 minutes, one hour, but it is not in the food. So desirably, it is, uh, we can say, 3 to 10 minutes. Then slowly, we will be releasing the pressure out of the food. So third step is like that. Then, what is the principle? Like you are putting the pressure. So what is happening in the food, basically? So first principle is Lee Chatelier principle. Any phenomena phase transition change in the molecular configuration chemical reaction accompanied by a decrease in volume is enhanced by the pressure that means when you are giving the pressure to a food what is happening so you are giving the pressure the product cup uh, volume is reducing so product volume is getting down but Food is resisting, okay? Agar uh, someone is pressing you, what you will do? You will push back, okay? So food is again uh, trying to come back to its original position. So in that, again, resistance is there. Food is actually declining the more like uh, do not press. So in that, what is happening uh, against the pressure against the volume decreasing wall food is trying to come up at its original position in that the in that resistance heat is generating and the microorganisms are bursting the cell wall of the microorganism is bursting so that is the main principle then isostatic principle second one is pressure is uniformly distributed throughout the entire sample it is not like you have 10 centimeters and 10 centimeter cube ka one piece is there uh, the pressure is applied on that cube so it is not like in one corner the pressure is only acting in all the corners at all the points even at my milli micrometer point the pressure is applied each each and every point it is isostatic that means equal and even pressure is applied on the food so that's the second one. Then, so what is happening? We'll see the small pictures are there, like before the uh, microorganism there, and then you are applying to 50 micro, uh, megapascal. So with that, microorganism feeling some pressure, and when it is uh, uh, reaching to very high point, that cell wall is burst, and microorganisms are killed. So, uh, so this I have uh, uh, one point is there when high pressure alters hydrogen and ionic bonds responsible for holding protein in their native form. So that is again one very important criteria. And high pressure can kill microorganisms by interrupting their cellular functions without the use of heat that can damage the taste, texture and nutrition of the web food so there is no heat input there is only pressure input for the food then 
there are two types of processes. One is the batch, one is the semi-continuous. There's no continuous process because we can understand now uh, we have to generate pressure. So to generate the pressure, there is one batch is always there. So it is always semi-continuous. Continuous system is not developed. So either the batch or the semi-continuous. Liquid foods such as juices are processed in a semi-continuous system without any packaging requirements. And then solid foods, bulk products, etc. are there which we can process in the batch type. So in a container, we can put uh, our products with the packets also. So it is not like you need to put your raw food as it is in the container. We can provide the packets also. There are uh, um, some few types of uh, packaging materials are there which only we can use in the high pressure processing. All type of materials cannot be used like glass cannot be used. Uh, low density polythenes cannot be used. Only the uh, pack uh, that flexible packaging material or polystyrene uh, packaging uh, materials are only can only be used. Okay, so uh, you uh, see here we have uh, construction units. So uh, we have pressure uh, uh, pressure vessel is there. So pressure vessel uh, is very important. Okay, <coughs> uh, because it. This pressure vessel has to withstand 400 to 600 megapascal ka pressure. So it is important. This is uh, sometimes, most of the time, is monolithic. Monolithic means that pressure vessel is made up of one type of material and single-handed. There's no, no joint, no welding, shelling, nothing is there in that. Okay. Uh, then closer for the ceiling vessels. Uh, which uh, walls are used sealer should be good enough if seals are not good so when you are giving the pressure of 400 mega passer it will burst it will open up so liquid can come out okay then high pressure intensifier pump which will create the pressure of 400 mega pascal that pump from that water or any other liquid which is being used will be pumped at that pressure to the pressure vessel okay then system to control to monitor this everything then product handling system for transferring product to and from the vessel in the batch type it can be manual in the semi-continuous type it can be automatic then system for filtering and reusing the compression unit that sometimes we need to uh, replace our liquid also. Uh, this is the basic uh, flow diagram, high pressure uh, technology. Uh, pack the food in ster like, uh, sterilized container. We need to uh, pack the food. Then uh, we have to put into the pressure vessel. Uh, we need to fill the pressure vessel with the water pressurize the chamber okay hold that pressure depressurize that chamber and remove your processed food this is the basic flow diagram okay so there are many of queries in the chat system i will take it in the end of uh, my session okay maybe your queries uh, is resolved during my presentation also only okay so there are few advantages of high pressure processing. High pressure processing reduces microbial loads and inactivates the enzyme that I have Recording already, stopped. already uh, discussed. Vitamins, essential nutrients, and the other sensitive profile of food undergo minimal or recording in progress. Unlike uh, thermal processing. Intensity of high pressure uh, processing treatment is independent of mass. Okay, there is no dependency on the mass, thus reducing the cycle time as compared to the thermal processing. Uh, because in the thermal processing, the mass is important. Mass means the weight or the size of your food product is important. Uh, pasteurization can be done by application of high pressure even under the chilled condition. That is very much important. Okay, high pressure can be used to retard the browning reaction because there is no heat generation. So there may, may, may not be any kind of browning reaction in the food. Okay. 
so there are uh, wait a minute so there are few limitations also in the high pressure technology so first and very important is the capital cost it is not a very basic unit in the industry you can buy a pasteurizer at the cost of maybe 10 lakhs okay but the high pressure processing setup is will cost you maybe about 40 crores 2 crores at the lab level okay when the quantity of food you can treat uh, is around maybe 2 liter so if you have to treat like bulk uh, 50000 liter or 5000 5, liter uh, liquid so it might cost you more than 40 crores so it is a very expensive unit so first and all the very basic limitation is it is a costly device then it is very complex anybody or in general normal people cannot use it uh, like a very uh, you need to understand the concept uh, a very technical person who can deal with the high pressure processing unit can only handle this kind of equipment then maintenance and structure is very important if something is suppose it is uh, uh, damaged or uh, break breakdown is uh, happening so it cannot be you uh, repaired at indian level so engineers might come from the abroad or the company uh, in india nobody is manufacturing in india the companies are uh, procuring uh, or exporting the parts from outside of the world and they are assembling in the india so in chennai of uh, two to three companies are there which they are manufacturing and they are manufacturing small units with the part which are coming from the outside and they are selling it to at the not at the industry level they are selling it to the uh, university level so they uh, suppose uh, IIT Khadakpur is there so they are uh, giving it there then defense laboratory lab is there then in the uh, our non-thermal technology uh, excellence center is there in the NIFT in Thanjavur so they are giving the equipments there so it is not in India not even a single company is there which are making high pressure processing um a setup a complete okay so because it is a very 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 uh uh, you can say um, in the food also some like dragon fruit is there it is a uh, uh, food of a decoration type okay so like that is it is a very good technology then food enzyme and bacteria spores are very resistant to the pressure so we have to see if bacteria spore as you can understand the bacteria spore might uh, 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 resist this pressure so we have to give little bit of uh, temperature also in that case okay the residual enzyme activity and this, uh, this dissolve oxygen result in the enzymatic or oxidative de degradation of food a uh, certain food component so we have to see uh, what kind of effect uh, is not very much on the enzyme also okay then uh, these are the some uh, industries in India which are preparing their beverages or liquid uh, th throughout the country. The first one is Rakyan beverages. So you can see the raw juice in the market or in the mall uh, uh, smart uh, shops. So there you can see the new bottles of energy drink is there raw. So that is actually high pressure process. Then there is a fresh uh, drops then there is a farm pressed and then there is a uh, rust or organ so these are four companies which are normally uh, dealing the uh, for juices in the high pressure processing uh, if we can see or if we see it is uh, like good for the uh, consumer to uh, consume this uh, uh, juices which are nutritionally preserved but the main hurdle between research and commercialization of this technology technique in india is because it is uh, costly and insufficiency of its application uh, it 
to ensure complete safety of all food universally. So it is again, the cost is expected to be reduced in future. Okay, um, once it is commercialized, more and more companies are there. So be, once you are using something, so the cost will definitely come down. Okay, uh, so it might come uh, down in the future. Then uh, IIT Kharagpur is already carrying out many, many kind of activities in the high pressure processing application. They are using the mango, they are using the fish, uh, everything. Then uh, recently, the Defense Food uh, Research Laboratory, they have also installed this kind of uh, this equipment and they are also doing the research to give a uh, new information to the food industry in the India. Uh, the second one is the pulse electric field technology. So it involved, like in the high pressure processing, it, it was involving high pressure. In the pulse electric field, it is involving high electricity or we can say the voltage. So it is up to 20 to 80 kilovolt per centimeter. Per centimeter, that means on one centimeter, the 80,000 voltage is being applied on the food. 80,000 voltage, just imagine the one kind of a transformer, you can see outside of your roadside. So one transformer is there that is around 50 to 60,000 of voltage. So we are applying up to 80,000 of voltage. So that means that one, tra tra your one transformer is giving supply to your complete uh, colony or you can say the area. So that much electricity we have to apply on your food. So that is pulse electric field. So this is being used in the liquid, solid, semi uh, uh, liquids, and it is batch type, semi batch type, and continuous. All kind of uh, techniques are there in the pulse electric field. Okay. So uh, I'll just skip this part, and we'll see when you are giving a high voltage what is happening when the high voltage is being supplied to a microbiological cell so what is happening the pore formation will happen and sometimes if the electricity or the voltage is that much the pores will form okay uh, uh before it is it was used in the food it the pulse electric field technology was uh, uh, used to uh, take out DNA's RNA out of a cell, uh, out of a cell, okay? At that time, what is happening? They used to apply an electric field at which the pores were formed and the uh, whatever material you need, RNA, DNA, that will come out of the cell wall and the pores are reversible. So once it is the work is done, so the pores will again form and the cell wall is intact, okay? Or it is used in some kind of extraction of essential oils like that. But if you give a threshold voltage, that means once the pores are formed, that is irreversible. There's no uh, formation of pores again in that case permanent damage of cell is happening. So that is the uh, um, principle of pulse electric field. Okay. So uh, the one, the two mechanism, the one is the electroporation and then second is the electrical breakdown. So in 1967 only the Sale and Hamilton, they have reported this study and they have applied the pulse electric field in the milk only. Then uh, when a microorgan, uh, this uh, I have actually uh, this uh, already um, described you the phenomena. So I'll just skip this part also. Now you can see the pore formation is there. Then the water influx is there because of that the membrane is rupturing and inactivation of cell is happening. Okay, so this is the basic phenomena when the pore formation is irreversible that will create a in uh, and this influx of water is happening due to osmotic imbalance okay then uh this we'll just see so 
Really, this C1, uh, one person have studied this on the bacillus series also. So you can see how the pores formed and that lead to the rupturing of your cell wall. Okay, and that lead to the destruction. So, basic components are we have one electrical circuit consists of one or more power supplies the, which can uh, give you 60,000 uh, uh, voltage. Then we have energy storage capacitor bank. We have charging current limited registers. Switching system to charge or discharge or to change uh, the uh, waveform then pulse forming network so this is little bit of electrical part of your uh, pulse electric field set then uh, electrical circuit consists of one or more power this is again the same line okay in case of continuous system we have one pump a chamber cooling system okay one high voltage and high current drops so this will just measure what is the high voltage and high current uh, uh, situation in the pulse electric field. You can see the setup also. We have a controlling and monitoring system. Then the raw product uh, is pumped. Uh, pumped. Uh, the, uh, from, then you can see the temperature chamber. This is a treatment chamber is there. Then high voltage pulse generator is there. Then uh, once it is... Uh, Then once it, uh, the, uh, uh, just wait a minute. Okay. Uh, once you are giving the pressure, uh, sorry, the high electric electricity to your treatment chamber. So the bacterial inactivation is happening. There is no increase in the temperature sometime because the, uh, because of this kind of high voltage, even uh the when uh, current are there the maybe heat generation might be there even 60000 of voltage uh, is there there is slight increase in the temperature of food product and uh, scientifically it is 10 degrees celsius okay so 10 degrees celsius temperature increases uh, so what is happening so we have to provide a cooling chamber also so many of devices are accompanied with the uh, cooling devices uh, alongside the treatment chamber okay So uh, there are uh, DC generators are there. So the AC current of uh, is changing into the DC generator to, and that uh, is changing into the high voltage and capacitors are used of huge capacity because all the uh, energy or the voltage is stored in the capacitor and from the capacitor, it is stored. And once the pulse electric uh, field forming net network uh, with the use of MOSFETs, we switch the system from this capacitor, it will generate the wave, whatever wave we need by either it is os uh, oscillating wave or exponential or triangle or uh, square wave. Okay, so uh, the main wave is the square wave. That is the most lethal one in the pulse electric fit setup. So from there, it will change into the type of wave and that wave will be, to, uh, will be supplied to your food. Okay, then uh, the bacteria will be inactivated. There are few advantages of pulse electric field setup also. Number one, less time treatment. Okay, it is only the microsecond. So you can just imagine if uh, in the uh, sky also, when the lightning is happening, okay, so that is around 30,000 to 40,000 voltage, okay, during the thunder time. So at that time, once the uh, lightning is happening, if it will fall on the earth, the disaster will happen. So, so you cannot give that much of voltage to your food for even for the one minute. That is big amount. Okay. So very less than that means only the microsecond. Microsecond means uh, it's like uh, uh, one microsecond. One microsecond is uh, one lakh time lesser of one minute okay 10 to the power 6 lesser of one minute is one microsecond 
So for only five microsecond, ten microsecond, up to hundred microsecond, you give this kind of voltage to your food. You can repeat this voltage for number of times. Okay, but you cannot give sixty thousand voltage for more than thousand microsecond. It will just burn your food, or it might explode your complete setup. Okay, it is a low temperature uh, treatment. This. There's no temperature increment unless uh, there is a cooling system. So in the high pressure temperature might go up to 90 degrees Celsius, 110 degrees Celsius. But in the pulse electric field setup, it is the room temperature. You can treat your food even at 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. Substitute for conventional heat pasteurization. It is being proved. The milk, which can be treated with the pulse electric field, uh, field is equivalent to the pasteurized, commercial pasteurized milk. It increases the cell shelf life. It uh, uh, helps to preserve the quality. It makes the food as fresh as it was on the farm. It inactivates the vegetative or the spore forming microorganism, which is again a good uh, aspect as compared to, to the high pressure processing it reduces the microorganisms um, up to six logs okay it is used to pasteurize juices milk soup etc there are few advantages everything is come with some kind of limitations okay so the first in all the non-thermal technology is it is capital cost these equipments are uh, costly. Among all the high pressure technologies, the costliest one is high pressure processing. Though uh, you can have this uh, pulse electric field set up at the rate of 10 lakhs of to treat about 200 ml of your juice, liquid, whatever you want to treat in India. So companies are there which are now manufacturing this unit and you can have it at a lower price also. Okay, microorganisms are destroyed by PEF then again, but uh, it is tough to uh, put, uh, uh, penetrate the spore. But again, with little bit of uh, temperature, you can uh, deactivate that also. Then ref uh, again, refrigeration is required. In the high pressure processing, there is no uh, refrigeration is not required after the processing, but in the pulse electric field uh, the refrigeration is required then enzyme again a uh, little bit of resistance but in then circle in many of the studies we have seen then pef is a continuous process method which is not suitable for the solid food so for the solid food there is a batch type for the in the batch you can use a use a solid food also but for the solid food it will come in the contact with the liquid because in the liquid you will uh, supply the electricity and from the liquid it will transfer the solid the method is again with the time the issues are resolving also because what is happening in the pulse electric field setup between the two electrodes, there should not be any kind of air gap. Air gap should not be there. If the air gap is there, so the spark will generate. If spark will generate a 60,000 volt, what will happen? Same as what is the light happening in the sky. Lighting is happening. So there should not be any air gap. So to prevent air gap, if you need to treat a solid food, you have to immerse your solid food into a liquid food. That liquid food will come into contact with, with your electrodes. Okay. Then this is very basic study. What happened in India, uh, what they have done, they have used the PV panels. Okay. In the PV panel, they have stored the energy. And this stored energy was converted to the AC to DC. And then you can see in the here uh, PF treatment chamber, they have dollar and they have used it for the milk. And the, they preserved the milk for like uh, four to three hours. Okay. And that system was used. Uh, this system was able to um, you, uh, hold this uh, or maybe the stored energy was for five to five five to six hours okay then uh, uh, just jet spin pulse electric field system is there so they are manufacturing this uh, 
unit, then Anna University, ICER, NDRI, DRDO, D and NIFTIM, Thanjavur. Uh, these are some institutes uh, which are involved in the pulse electrophil setup uh, research projects. So this is something and then thank you so much.